Hi, in this video, I'm going to continue my series on uh, solid design principle in Golang. So today's video, I will be covering the Liskov substitution principle. I will mention what this principle is, and then I will show a very short example showing how that actually works. So what the substitution principle says is that functions that use pointers or references to base classes must be able to use objects of derived classes without knowing it. This is not exactly very clear from the context of Golang. So as a slightly deeper uh, explanation, uh, it goes like an object such as a class and a sub object such as a class that extends the first class must be interchangeable without breaking the program. This makes sense in case of object-oriented programming languages. So in case of Go, we have uh, we don't have inheritance, but we have composition. So here the words are slightly different. So I'm going to show you an example to explain what exactly this means. So let's start with this struct. So there is a struct called printer, which doesn't have anything, but this, it has this function called info, which takes uh, a person type and the person type is an interface which has get name function so uh, what this means is that anything that implements this get name can be considered as a person interface or person type and what this printer program does is basically calls this get name function of that type and basically prints it and get name gives out a string so that's the first part now we have this human struct which has a name and it also it implements uh, this get name function and here it basically returns the name so here human struct implements get name which is why human is a person human is a person interface and then we have few other structs so we have teacher struct and we have student struct and here they also have human inside them okay and on top of that we have like salary for teacher and marks for student so what this substitution principle basically means is that for a human, we can call human.getName and the same way for a teacher struct as well, we can call teacher.getName and for a student as well, we can do student.getName because all of them have human inside them. So that's basically what it means from a Golang perspective. So as an example, here in the main function, we have h is this human, which just has a name. Then we have a student which has a human and has marks then teacher we have a human as well as salary so if i initialize a printer struct here so uh, i can call this info function where i have to put a person as an argument so a person can of course be human here because human directly implements this get name but i can also call the teacher as well as the student so here i have uh, this human, the student, and the teacher. So if I execute this program, I see all of them are running. So it is printing the first name, the second name, and the third name. So teacher type and student type are basically subtypes of the human type. So they can both be substituted with the human type. So because this can take human this function can take human which means this can also take this can also take student as well as the teacher type 